buhay at kabuhayan. Yan po ang mahalagang maitawid natin ang kababayan natin sa krisis na ito. Maibsan lamang ang kanilang hirap at makapagligtas ng maraming buhay. That is what we tried our best to do in the city of Manila. To think of so many ways to save lives while at the same time keeping the economy open so that the loss of jobs and livelihood could be mitigated. And modesty aside, you know, results matter. And nakita nyo naman po sa maliit naming kaparaanan ang naganap kung paano nairaos ang mga taga Maynila. That is also the reason why I did not choose a known political brand, a nationally famous politician, or what you call the, sabi nga, political marriage. No? And opted to uh, choose a position known for serving our people through the last 27 years to help anybody. It is because serving our people, especially the poor, is my motivation, not political interest, not personal ambition. And if the people, with the help of the Almighty God, will trust me, come May next year, I will devote the first two years of my administration towards reinforcing our health system to best cope with the pandemic. Looking at the future possible outbreaks and be prepared for the same in any case or eventuality. Even as we do everything to revive and rehabilitate our economy to create more jobs, more business, and more opportunity. That will be my focus in the first two years of that six years. But to do that, I will need the help of the best, the brightest, and the most experienced patriotic Filipinos to be in our administration, in our government. As I have said, I can work with anybody for as long as they are willing to work with me, regardless of political color or regional origins. And I will appoint, I will appoint them after thorough vetting by a personal personal selection group or search committee. Meritocracy, uh, sorry, meritocracy will be the guiding principle. I will reduce the number of undersecretaries and assistant secretaries and as much as possible qualified career servicemen and women in the bureaucracy will be given a break the same thing that we did in the city government of Manila. As I have previously stated, I will work with Congress to reduce the taxes on two most basic of commodities, petroleum and electricity. While it is true that this will be a loss of substantial enough revenues for our government, it will also, at the same time, the other side of the coin will alleviate the sufferings of our people. It will so also increase their purchasing power, which will stimulate consumer spending, and thus the wheel of commerce or the velocity of money will turn around once more. I will call on the local government units to partner with government financial institutions in the case of DBP and Land Bank and securitize future windfall earnings on the account of the Mandana's ruling to assist and extend financial assistance to MSMEs to get back on their feet through zero interest bridge financing. The impact of several lockdowns have wrought havoc on their operations, whether in tourism, related services, retail, and even manufacturing. If we are able to save them through some kind of mini Marshall plan, 
with the national and local government joining their efforts, we will create more jobs, opportunity, and livelihood. As MSMEs together constitute the bulk of our employers. We will focus on minimum basic needs in our first two years, especially those that will improve our human development index. Health, education, housing, and jobs and livelihood. So we must build more and better health facility while addressing problems of malnutrition and mental health. We must also upgrade our tech book course courses to include the adaptation, adoption of technologies of the fourth industrial revolution, such as robotics, the way we did, we're doing it in our hospital also, and automation, and create more accurate AI or artificial intelligence models. In Manila, we gave all our public school students with tablets, with 20 gig connectivity bandwidth every month with rollover with participation of private sectors and laptops for our teachers. The same thing with the bandwidth, school supplies and COVID hygiene kits to address the problems of distance, distance learning. We should do that. We should do that in the entire country. And we should train our teachers even as we give them the tools and better facility. We must level up on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or what we know STEM program, because these are the most relevant careers that will allow our people to catch up with the rest of the world and migrate from business processing outsourcing, which is papatayin po yan ng mga artificial intelligence later on, uh, using voice to knowledge process outsource, outsourcing. So from BPO to KPO, iahanda natin ang industriya na yan sa susunod na pagsubok na darating sa mga manggagawa natin sa business processing office or outsourcing. For so long, we have neglected our housing and the backlog of poor families who not have any security for themselves. Naging ano siya, perennial uh, problem. And their children is a specter that touches my heart because I was once an informal settler hindi naman kaila sa inyo. <laughs> eh, dati rin akong squatter. Katulad ng mga magulang ko na natira kami sa tundo. At hindi ba sa tundo? Sa squatter na tundo. Whenever we make housing available and affordable to the poor, we elevate and give back human dignity to every family ng mga beneficiaryo ng programa to. So, I will emphasize socialized housing as a new focus for the Build, Build, Build program, which President Duterte has started. And whatever has been started in the Duterte Build, Build, Build program, we shall continue. I do not believe in changing good policies and programs with a change in administration there must be continuity. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, there will be certainty and predictability in doing business with government and equal opportunity and level playing field, the business sector under my watch. For far too long as well, we have a sluggish growth in agriculture whether land-based or in aquaculture, this impacts on our food security. And already, we are importing fish, pork, and even vegetables. 
and of course our staple grain which is rice we cannot continue in this manner while we realize that for the meantime food imports curb inflation and avert shortages for our consumer we cannot depend on food importation alone over the medium term food security is the most important element in national security to this end and to enhance our agricultural productivity i will propose to congress the creation of department of fisheries and aquatic resources separating it from land-based department of agriculture after all there can be no experts in fisheries who is also expert in land-based agricultural endeavors we will have to modernize our agriculture yes technology must be adopted by our partners and it will be available no be it especially in the production technology or in post harvest and storage facility including adequate cold chain facilities farmers are a dying breed if, if we continue to neglect agriculture all our young men and women will desert our farms and our food security will be imperiled all our efforts must unite towards economic recovery or rebound and being able to compete with the rest of our uh, uh, ASEAN uh, neighbors in attracting foreign investments and tourism these are the major drivers of our economy and outmost political will will be needed both in terms of legislation and program implementation to ascertain that rules are not changed in the middle of the ball game that contracts are honored by any change in administration all done with transparency and good governance towards all this commit i commit myself and with the help of our god may our and jos and our people kailangan ko lang po sa inyo i-chance the true and meaningful change so long promised but always compromised in the shows of politics shall soon happen by the middle of next year again last rest assured I will be fearless confronting problems. We will be fair in addressing it and doing action plan programs of governance. And I will be loyal and faithful to every Filipino here in the country and abroad.